Hello everyone, this is uh, DB0 again and we're going to be casting another match from the third finals of the uh, from the th round of the 32 from the Board Game Geek tournament sec the second uh, with me is Owen again and Hello again. we're going to uh, be seeing a match between Rebelikov and Zond Rebelikov is on the 15th position from the Swiss um, and John, I think, is one of the higher ups. So, hopefully, we see an interesting matchup. Oh, Rebelikov is very much out of deck. There's, um, in this version that they both playing, there's a little bug between um, bad publicity and uh, and what you call it bad publicity and uh, uh, account siphon but uh, ah, yeah. it shouldn't affect them too much um snare yeah. haven't seen snare for a while yeah, it used to be sort of like the sort of go-to card for a lot mm. of courts. Which cards, courts didn't know what to splash, they'd just throw in a snare. Uh, it looks like he's mulliganing that. Yeah, but at the moment there's so many good stuff to put in your cooperation decks. It's very difficult. Oh, 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 oh. Like, It could be worse, it could be worse. I mean, at least could you can get, one of the, get, get rid of one of those. Possibly Ice Wall HQ. Yeah. He can right, play... The problem is if he plays those hostile takeovers uh, first thing, it's going to be so difficult late game. And he has to hope. I mean, he is facing Kate, and Kate traditionally is that sort of more passive, big rig style yeah, player. And yeah. We have we can see two magnums in his hands. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully for John, the you know, the pressure will be a bit less in the first few rounds. Yeah. John's having a good think about this one. <laughs> Decide, you know, do I go for the hostile takeover or do I ice ball up? Ah, another ice ball. Okay, so you're going to keep the two, the two magnum opus. Better than none, I guess. But at least it's something to trash, I mean, like throw away, or you can risk losing it. Mm. So. The, um... Actually, replaying it for five is never much fun. <laughs> Which one? Which uh, is the second dice he got? Uh, he nice. drew a second dice. <laughs> okay, good thing. Uh, Double. Good thing Rebelikov is not running any. Okay, quite a fast uh, uh, good, good. <laughs> look. There we go, there we go. Right, Magnum is where he goes. Yeah, I'm wondering what he's looking for. Um. Maybe he's just maybe he's just trying to expand his options for the first few rounds. Mm, maybe. He can always oh, yeah. oh, pretty good. Pretty decent there. Yeah, I haven't seen no variety used yet, so it's really quite an interesting. Ah, so he's immediately getting rid of Yeah. Hostile takeover. At least one. At least. Yeah. So you can threaten him with an archer. It's always unfortunate that you have to give your opponent a bad publicity counter that early in the game, but I mean, if you're playing against Kate with Magnum Opus, in many respects, the economy is already going to be stacking against you, so... Kinda, yeah, but it still allows them to run much, much faster. It increases the tempo of the runner very much. Too bad publicity is basically a free Magnum Opus uh, click per run. So that's really decent. And there we go, Kate is pretty well protected against... Uh, Against the uh, scissors now. Yeah, I mean he's getting um, well, he's getting rabbit hole out here because obviously he's got use of pawn up in his hand, so if you know if trace becomes less of an issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, we actually he's played it already, so we might see him starting to get rid of rabbit holes already. Mm -hmm. Quite early to make that decision, but we'll see. Yeah, I guess he's probably wants to thin his deck before he starts drawing. I really think those I mean, two publicity are going to bite him in the ass very, very soon. <laughs> we'll have to see how aggressively Re Rebelikov plays this. Mm -hmm. On the 
conversation between the players. Maybe if I remember, play. if I remember correctly, I, I think I played Rebelkov. Oh, that's why he wants them. Yeah, that's what I think. But it just seems a bit early to start trashing the rabbit hole. Yeah. We'll see how he plays it. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the deck of uh, Rebelkov. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's the player I played uh, when in the first tournament. And he's my first matchup, and I want him with Jinteki. And he plays, uh, huh. and he plays a really uh, big um, rig kit deck, where he doesn't run at all. But once he's set up, he starts. Uh, he basically won't let you score any agendas in your remotes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're expecting. Whenever I see Kate, I mean, with Chaos Theory now. Typically, if you see Chaos Theory, it's going to be a faster, a faster setup type game. But mm -hmm. with, whenever I see Kate, I suspect Big Rig more than anything else. You're going yeah. to see, you know, a few turns developing, and then it's just going to be aggressive, powering through everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these ice. Take a look at these. This. Okay. Only making combinations. <laughs> and those bad publicity are really going to help score those notorieties too. All Kate needs now is um, is a nice uh, uh, corroder or uh, whatever, some kind of uh, barrier break, and she can easily score two notorieties in one turn, in two turns. Yeah, he could do. I mean, if uh, obviously, I mean, because he's not applying any pressure to the operation servers, then the corporation doesn't feel the need to over defend any of them. I mean, obviously, he's going to want to start building the the ice up a bit, but. Because, I mean, until you see, I mean, it's that effect when somebody starts targeting one of your servers, you know, you, you psychologically just sort of lash yeah, back and put yeah. more ice on it. Especially, he hasn't really done it especially if they start bypassing, if you start getting into it. Yeah, okay. so it looks like notoriety could be an option then. But... What kind of ice does he have? So we got Gadusu Shadow. It's funny because if Kate runs the server, she can pass it with. Uh, very little difficulty if she has a lot of money. I mean, he's kept two rabbit holes, presumably to keep Zoo free exactly. memory wise. And, but also, I mean, it looks like this version of Wayland's gone for a lot of tracing options. So. Uh, fortunately, he Not hasn't out. drawn any. Uh, hasn't drawn any. Uh, what you call them? Breakers? Yeah, only the Zoo. So. He's probably aggressively looking for them. Oh, two Magnum Opus, two may make his eye nasty. It's not been an unfortunate hand because you you know you want to hold on to those notarizes. You exactly, want to hold on to yeah. That tinkering, but he he wants to, to get the uh, actually stuff to. Uh, oh, he's exposing. But I think he's going to tinker. Ah, he's going to tinker and make, yeah, to, uh, correct, correct. Yeah, because he just wants to get the stuff out of his hand. Fair play, fair play. Maker's Eye, I don't think Maker's Eye is ever, like, towards the end of the game when getting into RNG is difficult, Maker's Eye's power does increase, okay. but, I have you know. to let you alone for a bit, uh, my son okay. is a bit awake, so feel free to make any more commentary and let me know what's going on. No problem, I will carry on. So we'll just have to see what the results of Maker's Eye are. Unfortunately, as commentators, we don't get to see what the cards are, so only know if something got scored. Through here. I mean, Rebellicon's hand in this instance is pretty. Oh, priority requisition, excellent start. And anything else though. Um, unfortunately, that's the problem with notoriety. Drawing it this early in the game is picking up the breakers. I mean, now would seem like an ideal position to score. You know, archives are still undefended. I mean, we know that HQ is likely defended, but unfortunately, with those ice in the way, Mike is just going to sit in his hand, logging it up. Oh, Project Atlas here, uh, John. Might be looking for his second Scorcher, if that's potentially. Yeah, I guess we'll see how the game develops. Hmm, I, see he, I see he snagged the three pointer. Quite nice. Very fast game from both players, I see. Great, but we'll see. Games open quickly and then slow down, so. What is he looking for? He's really pumping through his deck. 
I think he's just desperate for raid, because he's got special order though, so I think Yeah, he's exactly. Just so, why does he not use that? I do, there are still things he could discard. I mean, he's got a second, he's got spawns up there, he could chuck. Uh, at the moment, I would probably go for those notorieties. I would, run it, I would run it here to see what it is and this start scoring the right is. I think here I'm probably discarding Aesops. Aesops and uh, Steamhack maybe? Or the... Depends on who you've got. If you've only got one, you might want to hang on to it. He's drawing far. Space. He's there. He's drawing far too aggressively. I think he should have uh, used that uh, that special order when he got it instead of just keeping it. He probably wants it as a surprise, but. Uh... Well, cards you wanna, you know, if your hand's getting back full up, I guess you have to just start using your tricks, like you know, holding back. I, I'm always a fan of holding back things like in special order until I know I need it, but. But, you know, if you're getting to this situation, and he's already played, you know, Magnum and Zoo, so it's not like he fears program destruction at this point, because, you know, if he's going to fear program destruction after playing Special Order, he's going to probably fear it before anyway, so... Mm -hmm. There goes Infiltration, and the last one is the difficult one. There goes one of the right. Especially annoying with Infiltration, because you can always play Infiltration for two money. Yeah, but look at obviously it's not him. making difference, any difference because he has an opus for him, so... Yeah. Going out on John's side. John's handled his early agenda overload and is now, I think, settling down to slow again. Yeah, yeah. Now he has quite a bit of uh, time to build. Might even just leave it. Well, because that crazy feeling. I mean, true is he's seen Rebellicon's door so many times, he knows that, you know, there must be at least a special order or some kind of breaker coming up. So. Yeah, he's probably expecting the uh, barrier breaker soon. So, but then again, he only has a barrier to break, so. But at least having uh, Hadrian's Wall will reduce Rebellicon's current economic, yeah, Bellicott's got 10 credits at the moment. Yeah. Well, free for a runner. I think, however, unless um, John throws a melange, Bellicott is going to win the economic war. Ponder? Hmm? Having a ponder? hear you very well. I need to do some modification in my sound. Sorry, I think. Say something? Nothing. Moving a card for R&D. Show it, don't you? I think he's going to go for another agenda, maybe. Yeah, that was not a bad idea actually, because the second. Uh, mm, mm, I'm trying to think which one he could pick, but I guess Project Atlas here wouldn't be yeah. all bad. But the problem yeah. is, he's just thrown away his. Because all of the items on his remote server at the moment is primarily tag based. So he wants to. Because he's got Scorched Earth, but the way John's. You know, Rebellicov's kept his hand fairly full, so throwing away that Project Atlas token to pick up another Project Atlas is, is you know, good in the, in the long run, but short term, his Scorched Earth victory just. Wandered away from him a little bit there. Yeah, I think uh, an agenda. Uh, is... um, I think um, uh, given that uh, Kate is very cautious, she doesn't even run the remote server to even see the first eyes. It's um, quite interesting to see how he's going to play it. I think the reason is that uh, Kate is afraid of an archer, but uh, now he's going to force her. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Forcing the game so much. I think he's going like, to... I mean, as John, you've got to suspect that by now, 
Rebellikov's gone and picked a few of the tricks out of his deck, you know, he True. could have a spin hack, he could True. have a spin cycle. And uh, now you're basically making him desperate, even if he, your, your eyes, his eyes is not that good to stop the run. So you're making uh, the run desperate, but it's also a win-win situation, it's going to waste all his money and then he probably might gather even a tag or two. So that might actually mean that he can follow up with a scorched death. It's but true because if he uses any tricks here and doesn't draw, then mm -hmm. obviously his hand size will hit to fill yeah. possibly three. So it's a so. pretty good, good win win situation. Unfortunately, if he actually steals that agenda, it's going to be lead him to six points. So. What would have been really clever here is if John had held some sort of trap in his hand and then played mm. the trap to the table. <laughs> that would have been quite funny. Yeah, yeah. Held no trap, so we know it, we know it's a priority requisition. Ah, so he's get ditching the link with Bogus. That was actually a bad move. That uh, <laughs> that trap would have. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks he's making money to break through stuff, but in reality, he's probably well, making it cost more. To be fair, it would be three credits by itself anyway, because uh, it would be plus one link, and that would be basically for three eyes plus one, uh, plus one for his uh, side. So each spend, yeah, balances out anyway, but only for in the short term. In the short term, in the long term, he loses. I think he's probably going to look for uh, for, for barrier breaker. I think the barrier breaker is a better option here. Um, I mean, I guess the problem is he could run into both either you know a big barrier like Hadrian's or an archer. There are there's not really many good options here yeah, that he the, could run the into. The thing is, however, if he runs into an archer, the archer will have to trust one of the agendas, so he won't win with that priority. Ah, that's true. That so true. it's worth breaking using a barrier where you can actually uh, break through a wall of ice. Well, here he goes. Let's see what he goes for. Let's see what he, I think he's going to go for a, for a center breaker, though, which is actually going to be much better. No, he's going oh, for a barrier. Snowball. Put your advice, <laughs> not that you clear. Yeah, he thought the same way I did. And I suspect he's going to steam hack with this run and then use the uh, diesel to fill up his hand. Or maybe use the diesel first and then steam hack. Oh, oh. oh make his eye. Okay. Might be a misstep. No, I think he's desperate. I think he, he thinks he cannot get through, so he's hoping to just gather points. I think I can, oh yeah, I can. Well, he's done it, but I think it's the way I won the game. More... The thing is, you could you could try the server and then always jump back over. I guess, I guess he can, yeah, make his eye and then run the server as well with Steamhack. But he could have done it the other way around, and it would probably would have been yeah that way. But you know you're going to lose, then you can start considering cash corporate troubleshooter in there. But... Okay, so. Now he's probably going to steam hack. I don't think he'll have enough money though. Depends on how John plays this. There are a lot of traces here to be fair. Yeah, but he can but ignore I a lot of them. The problem is, he can ignore the Draco. He can defeat the Draco. He can ignore the Shadow. And he can ignore the one of the Caduceus. The problem is, if he ignores the shadow, it's going to trace him, it's going to give him a tag. He still has to link, so you have to see, he still has to raise all these eyes. So that's one, four, seven. So he's only going to have four credits for traces. So I think the steam hack might allow him to get through and not to get a trace as well. Come on, steam hack. Oh, right here. You know you want to. <laughs> There is no other option. I, I, yeah, you're right. There's nothing else he could do because unless he could pull, you know, three points of agendas from the HQ, which he, we know he can't, and also, yeah, he still wouldn't win. But I mean, he would put his points up. So. The only other consideration here is it could be a trap, obviously. But yeah, oh, this is so hard for him. No, no, why? Oh, he's gone for HQ. No, oh. he lost. He lost. Why didn't he steam hack? Am I a good game? Yeah. 
let's prepare our GG's. I think he's thinking it's a trap. I mean, the thing is, if you... I guess, I mean, like we said before, if you know you're behind, you may as well take a risk. And I guess running the, you know, running HQ could have provided that priority requisition. You know, that could have been in the trap yeah. in the remote server. He could have had the priority requisition in his hand. John only has, I think, three cards. So, you know, one in three chance of pulling a pri rec, and the other one could have been a trap, you know. Yeah. I think uh, uh, the, the, the fault of Rebelkov is that he's playing far, far too um, uh, safely. Yeah. Or possibly overthinking it, but who knows. Ah, he was too afraid of the archer. Ah, the ultimate finisher, revealing the ice. We round two. Yep. Like we saw earlier, we saw a guy go into a worse position than this and pull it back, so... Yeah. 